Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about how we can improve your jumping in any platformer style game. This jumping is going to include multiple jumps, so double jumping, triple jumping, however many you want. And it's going to include controlling your jump height by holding a button. Two very common systems in a lot of games, and a good way to give a simple mechanic a lot more utility and diversity. If you still haven't made your own platformer yet, or you just want to see the exact code that I'm working with, you can watch this quick video that I recently made. But again, this should easily slot into any kind of platformer style game. So open up your platformer like I've opened up mine, and let's go over and open your player object, and we can start setting up our better jumping system. So you see I have my setup for my old jumping and my old movement, but I'm gonna clean out anything related to my jumping so I can start anew right here. Since we're starting over from scratch, I am going to need a variable that controls my jumping speed, so I'm gonna create one here, and I'm going to set that equal to negative 2.5. Then we're going to need a couple variables to manage our multi-jumping or double jumping in this case. So I'm creating two variables. One is going to be called jump max, which represents how many jumps the player should be able to do total. I'm going to set that to two for double jumping. And then we're going to have jump count, which will keep track of how many times the player has jumped. So that way we don't go over the maximum limit. And lastly, we're going to do something similar for controlling the height of our jumps, where we're going to be setting a maximum time that we can hold the button to increase our jump height. We'll call that jump hold frames and set that equal to 15. And then we need the actual jump timer so we can keep track of how long we've been holding the button. Okay, great. Now we're ready to move on to our step event. Here you'll see that I have my platformer movement code all set up here, but really all we're going to need to do is alter our jumping code, which I have right after I get my X and Y speeds and right before I've done my collisions and actually moved my player, which is most likely where you have it too. And since currently my very simple jumping is controlled by just pressing a key simply, setting my Y speed, and then letting gravity take place, since we're having more control with this, we're going to need to add a new input. So in addition to having our jump key, key pressed variable for keeping track of a button press for our jump, we need to keep track of the hold as well. So we're going to set jump key hold to be equal to keyboard check VK space. Great. And now we can just focus on our actual jumping code. We're going to be completely starting from scratch and we'll start with initiating our jump. Our jumping is going to be primarily controlled by our jump timer variable and its jump hold frames. So that's how we're going to initialize our jump. So let me show you what I mean. First, we want to check if our jump key has been pressed. Simple enough. And logically, we also want to make sure that our jump count is less than the maximum amount of jumps that we're allowed to have. Right off the bat, we want to make sure that we increase our jump count counter. So we can go ahead and just make sure that the player can't jump forever. And next, let's set our jump timer to equal our jump hold frames. And let's explain why we do that as we move on to the next section of code here. So let's go under where we initialized our jump, and this is our jump based on the timer. What we want to say is if our jump timer is greater than zero, then we want to set our Y speed to be our jumping speed. Make sure if you're using a different variable name than Y speed for any kind of vertical speed or movement that you're using your correct variable name. And then while our timer is greater than zero, we also want to count the timer down. So that way our Y speed doesn't stay the jumping speed forever. Now for a set amount of time, the beginning of our jump is going to remain a constant jumping speed. So in our case, for 15 frames, this block of code will run, consistently setting the Y speed to equal our jumping speed and counting down this timer so it doesn't go forever. Currently, this looks very similar to the simple jumping code I had before, but by cutting our timer short, we can decrease that jumping height so if we go above our jump timer code, we can do that by essentially cutting off the timer whenever the jump button isn't being held. And we can do that with an extremely simple line of code by saying, if not jump key hold, then we will set our jump timer to be zero, which will stop our Y speed from being set to jump speed anymore, which will make my gravity kick in from up here, thus giving us the ability to do a high jump and a low jump. Now that our controlled jumping height is finished, let's finish up our actual double jumping. Currently the double jumping will work, but we haven't reset our jump count yet. So now that the actual logic of our jump is done, let's think about how our jump counter needs to reset. So let's go above all of our code at the very top here to reset our jump count. Simply put, we want our jump count to reset when we're touching the ground, don't we? And that's as simple for looking for a wall directly under us. So we would use place meeting, our X position, our Y position plus one pixel, which would be down one pixel, and we'd be checking for a wall. That means we're on the ground, and that means our jump count can be reset to zero. Simple. 
That all makes sense and works great, but one more thing we need to account for is what happens when our player is in the air. So we need to say if the player is not stepping on solid ground, then at the very least our jump count cannot be zero. It has to be at least one. This will make sure that if the player just simply walks off a ledge, they can't jump twice in the air. Because really a double jump is more allowing the player to jump once in the air. Not necessarily always getting to jump twice. And this will make sure that it works exactly that way. Now, if we were to run and test our game, I can do a tall jump, a short jump, I can do a double jump, and if I keep spamming the jump button, then I can't do more than two little jumps. I can only do two right now. And I can control myself in the air and everything because it still hasn't clashed at all with my original platformer. And if I wanted to, I could go into my create event and I could do things like altering the amount of jumps that I have. So I could tell myself that I have four jumps total instead of just two. So I could do one, two, three, four. And if I pressed again, I couldn't do it. Feel free to tweak the feeling of your jump by altering the jump speed and jump hold frame variables. But other than that, I hope you learned something and thanks so much for watching. 